Hello everyone, my name is Bubble Zest and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video, we are playing as Menchukuo, attempting to get the achievement Hail to the Queen. So let's begin, shall we? Manchuko has a very small army to start of just 9 divisions, so we'll change them all over to this reserve template, which is actually our largest template, and place them around East Hebei here. May as well exercise them so they're at least level 2. Now, Manchuko also only has 2 research slots to start, so we really do need to focus on what we get. So to start with, we're going to get weapons 1 and basic machine tools. Now, we could spam out a load of basic infantry equipment but in my opinion it's better to spam out a load of weapons one instead for focus what we're going to do is rush down to assertiveness so of course we have to start with pacifying the countryside and that's pretty much it to start so we'll go to speed five and begin right we've now done pacify the countryside and now of course we will do trade delegation now you could do the pacification of the, the bandits but we hope to recruit the bandits eventually now yes, the bandits will do their raids, and if you're very unlucky, they will blow up your military factories, but they might not, so you'll just have to take the chance. And in any case, it's not really worth it pacifying them when you can get the free units. Right, with guns 1 and basic machine tools done, we're now going to do dispersed 1 and, and improve machine tools. The more output, the better, and of course, like I said, spam out a load of the Lao Type 13. Better to spam out a slightly better gun than a completely useless gun from World War One. Right, we've now done request to control of the railways. Immediately, we're going to start diverting machine tooling. Make sure you do it every 90 days, as you can get at least four civilian factories for free. And now we have the choice between staffing the court with Manchus or doing five equal peoples. In my opinion, since staffing the court with Manchus leads to local arms procurement, you should only staff the court with Manchus. It's a shame in a way. Five Equal Peoples was a real idea in Manchuria around this time, and one that Puyi may or may not have believed in, so it's a shame that it's so underpowered. All it leads to is white Russian advisors, I mean, 5% division recovery rate is okay, and 2% recruitable population for five people armies, okay, but again, four military factories, that's far too powerful, in my opinion, it should be switched around so it's a bit more balanced. Right after staffing the court with Manchus, we are going to expand our Imperial Guards, and now we are going to expand our Imperial Army. Now we are going to need a lot of divisions to ensure that we can kick Japan out of China for the moment. So we are going to have to train up a lot of divisions and just take them green as that's all we can afford. To set them to max priority and have them deploy here and on this front line. We need at least 24 for East Hebei, 24 for Mengukuo, and 24 for Korea. That's how we're going to do things. Just spam them out and get as many as you can. And yes, this division is not the best. It's only a 12 whip, but it will have to do. We can't really get much better. Right now, expanded the Imperial Guards and we'll do local arms procurement now. With these extra units we've gained, we're going to place them around Darlin here. So when we break away, we can take the port immediately and Japan can't reinforce as easily. Now, these divisions are 7-2s. And while that isn't the best template anymore, they'll still do very good against Japan for the moment. And especially when you consider that they are veterans. Right, with bolster nationalism done, we're now going to purge the General Affairs Council. As well as that, we're going to hire the bandit remnants. All of them. There we go. That's nine extra divisions. As I said, we're, we're using them against Mengukuo. As you can see, they're fully equipped, so it definitely pays to use them. And now we'll just train these guys up there you go now we'll get 15 of those boys on the main Jukwa border and then we'll do the ones for the korean border and then we'll break away now don't worry about a lack of guns or anything you, there's many ways to get them japan is calling you into the war but don't bother it's not worth it in any way you can't win so just let japan bleed with purging Generally, the Affairs Council over, we are going to create underground workshops, we need a lot of guns, and also we are going to hit the button to prepare to seize Japanese army depots as many times as we can. Now, we are not ready for the moment, so we are going to invite Japanese settlers and then throw them out, but the two free civilian factories is very nice. And again, hit this button as many times as you can. With invites, Japanese settlers done, it's time. We are now going to do the independence war. So make sure you're ready by the end of these 70 days. Because it's now or never for Manchukuo. 
Right, we've done the Manchurian War of Independence, so let's begin. We've got it all to do now. So immediately to begin, place these units here and make them rush down to the port of Busan. All on aggressive. Yes, they're green and Japan will probably come after you eventually, but again, just keep them moving. Now, for these units here, make sure they take the port and defend both tiles here. Also, there might be a Japanese unit here, as you can see in this instance. For focus, do whatever. I'm going to reclaim the Empire so we can get more cores. For these units in East Bay, we're going to use them to take the port as well. So we can cut Japan out immediately and they'll starve. There we go. Now go aggressive. And as well, the ones on the Mengukuo border will eventually go to war. So of course, we should place them around here so they can just rush down and do it as quickly as possible. They should be out of supply, so Japan's units should die very quickly. Now go, go, go. We've got an interesting little war ahead of us, so let's do it. The Son of Heaven does not bow. And do not, do not forget to execute the plan. And there you go, Japan offers peace. Well, of course I'm going to accept it, but you know, I just got one thing to do first. Yep, the war has been won. There you go. White peace, and we have done it. Look at that. Now, depending on how good or bad China has done, you might not get these states that Matt and Guquo held, but as you can see in this instance, I did, and of course I'm definitely liking that. And now you have a big choice to make whether or not to do Imperial Divinity or Low Legitimacy. In my opinion, we need the research slot for the moment, so we're going to do Imperial Divinity. And we're going to also release the bandits. We don't need them anymore. They're not, they're not the best anyway. And also, I should have done this sooner, shut down the underground workshops. There you go. Goodbye, bandits. And just put your troops on uh, the Chinese Shangxi border for the moment. That'll be okay. We're going to change all our units to the 7-2s. Like I said, not the best division, but it's the best we can probably get. And anyway, it'll take a long time to get all that we need, so let's change them over. In fact, I'm going to see. Oof, that's a lot of artillery and guns we need, but we should, we should be able to get there. And now at this point, buy all your materials from the Soviet Union. It means you don't have to waste convoys that you don't have. Right, we've now done expanding the textile industry and now you have one pretty big choice to make. Whether or not to assert our own authority or offer fertilisation. If you're in a perfect situation, asserting our authority would be better as you could take down the whole United Front in one go. But also you'd have to be taking down the whole United Front in one go. So, I'm going to offer vassalization. We don't need all of them, in fact in an ideal case we want a few of them to say no. But the ones you want are probably Shangzi and the Guangzi clique. If not just for the Guangzi clique being able to put out a lot of troops. Right, we've offered vassalization, now we see who submits. Saibi so Sanma says no. Yang Shan says yes, that's Shangzi. Li, Li Zhongring says yes, that's Shangzi. Long Yan, which is Yanan, and Sheng also submits. That's, so that's everyone except the Saibi Sanma. I'd say that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Admittedly, it does leave us with the problem of having to annex four countries, but oh well, that's the price you pay for salvation, isn't it? And now we should, could do down pretty much whatever. I'm going to do Law University, get my units on the front line, and prepare for war with China. <laughs> with China having to divide itself so much because of our brand new puppets, this should be a lot easier. And China in this game even has strikes and widespread corruption, so yeah, I don't think... Their mandate is very strong. Right, it's time to go. Let's declare war on the Shaibi Sanma. And there comes China. Luckily, China's doing their famous bash their head strategy. Their favourite. You could use your puppets troops, but for the moment, I'm hoping to not need them. And now we'll just let China burn out. 
Oh, now that's a lot of damage. That's most of China's army encircled. And there we go, there goes the Chinas. That encirclement on Beijing was so good, we destroyed like 20 divisions. Now for the moment we will just take all states. We pretty much don't need anything else. And there you go, there goes the lot. Queen China. Now we have a very interesting prospect ahead of us of what we should do next. Because Japan is still a very, very imminent threat. Japan will still go after you, one way or another. As you see, in this instance, Japan has a war goal on the Shanxi Free State, probably from the Marco Polo incident. Honestly, not out of a sense of actually wanting to be a part of them, just to make this easier, we are going to join the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. We could even take over if we really wanted to. <laughs> that could be funny. But this is really just so we don't have to deal with Japan coming after us until we're good and ready. Because even if we annex Shangxi or Yunnan, Japan is still coded to go after countries like Guangxi, Xinjiang, so it's just worth it just to suck up for a few more years. At this point, we don't need to put out more troops or anything, or construct. What we're going to do is just build infrastructure and all that stuff to get the autonomy of our puppets down. There we go, that will do. Hell, I'm going to actually very limit my imports so I can get as more military factories as I can. There we go, we got very somewhat balanced production. <laughs> there we go. And we'll send everything to them as we can. But for the moment we're just going to build, build, build. Don't bother joining any of Japan's wars, there's no real need. So for the moment we're going to send... We're going to send Guangxi, our very few convoys that we have, and anything that we can send them. We have 1800 rifles we can send them, and 2200 of the even older sort. Not much autonomy to get rid of, but whatever. Now, a quirk of our being who we are means that we have these unique imperial protectorates instead of the usual integrated puppets or right commissariats. The main thing that this means is that they have, we need to get rid of 1200 autonomy points. A bit more, but oh well. It still costs 300 political power though, so mm, we may as well continue doing focus this for some time. There's no way we can get that much political power that quickly. Now of course we have another question about the foreign investors treaty. In my opinion, just do Germany. Germany likes you inherently. And in the best case scenario, if you do dominate Japan, Japan will accept and you can get them as a free puppet for the dragon swallow the sun. So, that's what we're going to do. Well, this is awkward. Me, as Queen China, has encircled the Guangxi clique's volunteer divisions. While I'm volunteering in Britain, Guangxi is volunteering for Italy. Well, this must be an awkward meetup. Especially as I'm killing some of their divisions. 
Right, we are finally ready to annex the Guangxi clique. Let's get rid of them. There you go. Now at this point, you should be more than able to slowly steamroll how quickly you can get down your puppet's autonomy. We have a lot of stuff to send to Shangxi now, so it should be very easy to get rid of them. Not too hard, and of course we should continue to build in them, just so we can increase their infrastructure as the sort. There you go, that's 400 autonomy points. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Admittedly, we still need 1,200, but you know, we'll have to take what we can get. And Annex and Guangxi is better, as Guangxi usually has the best industry. Just what I've seen personally. Also, if you want to do achievements like the good, the bad, and the weird, you should do things like expanding the oil fields and getting things like synthetics, because that's the way you'll do it. And at this point, to keep myself entertained, I'm basically just helping the UK in Africa. Like I said, you could do something with Japan if you wanted to, but meh, I don't. I don't really fancy fighting Japan today. Right, the next one is Shangzi. Goodbye. And now we'll move on to Yan'an. As you can see, we're now basically in the position to reduce our puppet's autonomy down to nothing immediately each time, which is very good. It saves a lot of time. Very well, Tibet. Your insolence shall be paid with fire. Now go, Volksal, and go and get him. And at the same time, Japan is going after the Philippines. Don't get involved with any Japan's wars. No need. Literally none. No real need to do a focus at this point either. We may as well just try and get as much PP as we can. Goodbye, Tibet. Maybe you'll find a place in another timeline. And that should be our last war, so like we really need any now to get hail to the Quing. And there goes Yanan. Just Sing Yang to go should be more than capable of sending them all that we need. 16,000 artillery in storage, that's ridiculous, and it's all artillery one. A load of guns one, very good to research them overall, I'd say. And finally, of course, guns two. Uh, and this motorised, which I'm not too sure where it came from, as well as my convoys. Perfect, 1,250. Now we just need to get our political power, and Xinyang will be gone. Yes, I did it! <laughs> I don't care, I did it! <laughs> I made Italy capitulate! <laughs> it doesn't matter what happens now, Italy's gone. <laughs> right, it is time to annex Xinjiang. There you go. And that's the final Lord Ward, meaning we can finally claim the Mandate from Heaven. Let's get rid of all these crappy troops. Oof. Can be very hard getting rid of all the wars and stuff, but it's quick enough. Like I said, eventually once you get all the equipment put together, you'll just steamroll and be able to annex them quickly. It's getting the political power that takes so long. And there you go. I have claimed the Mandate of Heaven. And that's the achievement. Hail to the Quing over. As Shuangtong has reclaimed what was lost more than 30 years ago. Look at that. And now he's got a brand new hat. Beautiful. And now the Son of Heaven no longer needs such pitiful allies. Goodbye, fool. I do not need you anymore. <laughs> I could have claimed leadership of the Great East Asian Coast Prosperity Sphere, but didn't want to. <laughs> anyway, if you wanted to continue this for Dragon Swallow of the Sun, you should probably try and get naval supremacy or power drop into Japan and then annex them. Could be interesting, but not what I'm doing today. For the good, bad and the ugly, just build up the main infrastructure in Manchuria and get as much oil as you can via synthetics. But yeah, the run's over at this point. The world is in a very, very peculiar place now, actually. For once, the Allies have actually managed to hold it together, and the Soviets did too. The Allies are pretty much winning very early. Germany's pretty much in collapse. G the Soviets have overran Bulgaria very quickly. Yugoslavia and Greece managed to hold on. So yeah, this has been a very fun and interesting game. Can't complain about it. 
So I thank you for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Leave any suggestions in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. This has been me, Bubble Zest, and goodbye. <laughs>